हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू माय यूट्यूब चैनल माय नेम इज़ सोफिया गोयल एंड टुडे वी आर ऑन द लास्ट वीडियो ऑफ द प्रॉमिस मिनी सीरीज एंड आई प्रॉमिस एट देयर विल बी नो मोर लेंदी वीडियोस ऑन प्रॉमिसेस व्हिच यू नो मे बी लाइक यू माइट बी बोर्ड और माइट बी इंटरेस्टिंग ऑफ इट बट या देर विल बी नो मोर वीडियोज ऑन दिस फाइन सो जस्ट ऑल रेड दिस लास्ट वन बट आई एम श्योर दिस इज डेफिनेटली गोइंग टू हेल्प यू आउट ओके so I thought like everything is finished almost or I was also a bit confused that whether uh, this video about uh, you know the difference between fetch and axios is required or not but I think yeah it is required it will help you to get those extra brownie points in an interview because it has been asked uh, to me in a lot of interviews uh, but whenever I I did not answer it uh, like it did not impact the end result so but yeah this will give you of course the extra brownie points so why miss that and of course some more knowledge is always helpful so let's uh, check this out so uh, the first and the foremost difference between fetch and axios is pretty simple as you know like fetch is already there with javascript whenever you are writing javascript you can simply use fetch because that is a part of the uh, you know web api as i already told you so you need not to you know uh, install any other library or anything external for fetch this can be handled simply but for axios we need to install a whole other library now installing a different library is you know increasing the whole weight of the application the whole application size and hence resulting in the slower application or you know something like that although it will not impact much just one thing but yeah these one these one and one and one and one things create a lot of things and then it becomes a heavier application so we try to avoid everything but still people like to use axios over fetch i mean most of the people like to use axios over fetch so what is the reason behind it so i will also tell you with the other differences coming up because axios gives more features which i am definitely going to tell you uh but like so but next we go to the second difference and which is the way of writing the code so as uh, i have already written the code here okay so that we can save some time in this video so now uh this is the code for uh fetch and this is the code for axios let me write here for fetch and this is for axios okay so if you see like in fetch we have the url we have these some options like we want the getter post method we want the course mode or not we want some sort of headers and we want some body like uh, uh, some dynamic parameters and then in the basically fetch we try to pass the url and these options that we have created and then uh, we check like if the, whether the response is okay or not and we check it by checking the response status is okay and if the response status is okay we get the you know we have already done the stringify with dot json always for fetch this is what we do but with axios uh, we have the url we have the options again but url is here in the options not you know separately like fetch uh, we have the headers we have the data but we need not to stringify it okay now uh, we get the response by using await axios and simply passing the options not the url then the response is fetched and simply response dot data is obtained so have you seen the syntax differences uh, it is better to know basically you cannot remember all of these but try to remember as much as possible so as i have already told you that the url is not passed in uh, for like directly inside the axios as it is passed for fetch okay second thing that you have noticed it for uh, extra parameters json dot stringify is done and the body property is used but here data property is used and stringification is not done okay the third thing to check the response okay we have response dot okay for fetch but we need to have response dot status text as okay and the status as 200 you might have seen with various axios that we check the status and if the status is 200 then we consider it as successful and last but not the least is uh, we need to you know do dot json for the response received from fetch but nothing is sort of this is done for axios so these are basically the syntax differences between fetch and axios now the third difference between fetch and axios is that 
basically fetch is not supported in ie or fetch is supported in the upper versions of the browsers remember i told you that uh, fetch was introduced later uh, initially like there were those xml http requests which were there so basically exios internal uses them hence exios is compatible to all the browsers but fetch is not compatible to all the browsers hence this is also one of the major differences okay the fourth difference is that you know uh, there is nothing specifically inside the fetch to do a request timeout like if the response is not coming it can give you error if error is there but there is nothing specifically for timeout but exios has again the option of timeout so that you know like uh, after what time the request can be timed out uh, if the response is not received although in fetch we can create an instance of the abort controller and we can use it like as you can see on the screen here we can use it in this manner to handle with fetch but it is not inbuilt inside fetch or uh, you know to handle these kind of properties we can create a polyfill for fetch like whatever is not present there we can create a polyfill what is a polyfill a polyfill is a replacement of a function uh, that we can create by ourselves uh, so that we can do some improvement in that function okay so for our library for our code we are creating this a new function uh, which has all the properties of the previous fetch and some new factors that we are adding it so the fifth difference is basically that uh, there are http interceptors for exio so basically uh, we have the code or you know we can intercept an http request with the help of exios you can see the code on the screen basically and here like these interceptors can be used uh, to uh, like you know for some particular kind of code like uh, for example there is a login request before creating a login request or before creating a login api we want to send a message that request has been made or maybe you know after getting some sort of response we want to get yeah before getting some sort of response we want to send a message this is what we can directly do with exios because exios support these kind of interceptors uh, these exios.interceptors.request.use are there for the request ones and the response.use are one for the response okay and uh, last but not the least is you know whenever an api call is made uh, you know we sometimes want to show a progress bar like if it is called for one second we want to show this continuous progress being done after some time so this is a good practice and a good user interface experience so exios has you know some sort of inbuilt library which support this kind of system and it is way more easier uh, with exios to show these kind of progress bars but with fetch this is not the case we have to write more code manually and uh, we have to handle it our, by ourselves only so you know these are you know basically these uh, very you know nice things and extra stuff that is provided with exios and most importantly the compatibility with all the browsers that is the reason that people are preferring exios over fetch these days so yeah i think uh, this is about it about today's video i think this was informative and this should be helpful to you and maybe you interested in learning about it if you did please like share and subscribe the channel and tell me in the comment section that whether you liked it or not or was it helpful or not until then uh, see you in the next video bye bye